and good evening and welcome into the Kyle Whittingham Coaches Show coming to you live from the Eccles Football Facility here on campus and from Kyle Whittingham's office. Our show tonight is always brought to you by Smith's. Low prices and market fresh and we'll be here every Tuesday night the rest of the way, not by weeks, but every game Tuesday the rest of the season we will be here with you on the Kyle Whittingham Coaches Show over the next hour or so. We will talk a lot of Utah football with you. We'll have uh, Darren Paulo and Francis Bernard swinging by to talk some Utah football with us. Utah's 2-0. Big win over Northern Illinois. We'll talk Idaho State with you. Some big picture stuff and uh, a whole lot more coming up on the Coaches Show here tonight from the Eccles Football Building. I'm Bill Riley. For those of you streaming us in tonight on the uh, Twitch and uh, YouTube channel, we welcome you guys in on the video stream tonight. And, of course, all of you listening in on our flagship radio home, ESPN 700. I'm Bill Riley, and this, of course, is the head coach. He just stepped off the practice field here tonight. How was the uh, day today? Good day. It's uh, This team is ever since last spring, has been uh, a team that's got a great work ethic, gets down to business, and uh, you know takes things very seriously on the practice field, which is great to see. Do you attribute that to so many upperclassmen and so many guys that have been in your program and played key roles for you that are back this year? I would say yes, and that's something that, that uh, we saw last year with last year's group and losing so few guys. Uh, it's really essentially you know the same group as last year minus a, a few guys now those guys were key players don't get me wrong but but uh these guys know the drill they know how to operate and uh we've got great leadership this year as well you're starting to feel a little fall like out there you had a little rain yeah. today temperatures were yeah. cool it was a nice day for football yeah, wasn't last it? week we were just dying i mean it was 90 plus each day <laughs> of practice and and today was a nice reprieve from that you had, a, you had a morning game on Saturday, which is a rarity anymore, and you had Northern Illinois in. You got to win, 35-17. Tell me what you liked about Saturday. Tell me what maybe you weren't so jazzed about after you went back and watched the tape. Okay, well, uh, defensive performance we liked after those first, you know, we gave up a, a monster drive, uh, second drive of the game, and then a couple busted coverages in the first half. But other than that, you know, the other – you know, 40 minutes or whatever were, were good, was good football. Uh, shut them out in the second half, took control of the game, handled the run game. You know, they rushed for way under 100 yards. It was good to see the offense get the ball down the field throwing. And uh, Tyler Huntley was outstanding. He, uh, in fact, I think he was the highest rated quarterback in the nation. He was. His QBR, QBR rating was number yeah. one. He's top 10. He's number 10 in the country right. through two weeks, but he was number one last right. week. That, that number right there is your best barometer of determining how your quarterback is playing. And that takes into account uh, everything, you know, his running ability, uh, penalties, the strength of the defense that he's going against. I mean, that takes into account virtually everything it, it can possibly uh, it can. And then uh, to have him come out as the number one guy and, and in the top ten now is a is a great accomplishment for him. For him. And he is really embracing uh, Andy's coaching and Andy's style and Andy's uh, philosophy and his, his schemes. Is, is his approach any different? I mean, Tyler's a senior now, so he's been in your program four years right. and he's played now for three do you get a sense that he's any different? Do you see his approach being any different in, in the meetings, on the field, the way he, he carries himself? I would say, yeah. I mean, he's always been a, a, a good, uh, attentive player and never a guy that, uh, you know, takes things for granted or doesn't work hard because he's always been a hard worker. But he's taken it up a couple notches this year. And uh, he is dead serious about everything he does. And uh, he wants to be great. And that he's got a burning desire. And uh, that's really starting to manifest this year. So he, he's been good. Tyler's efficiency has been terrific. His numbers haven't been huge yet, but uh, it could have been even a little bit bigger on, on Saturday. You've, the first two games, we didn't have a show last week to talk about it, but the first two games of the year, we've seen great halftime adjustments by Andy a little bit, but especially by Morgan Scally. You guys have given up probably more yards than you would have liked in the first two games in the first half. Mm -hmm. But talk about halftime adjustments, how that works. Is that all Morgan? Are you working with Morgan on that? How are those halftime adjustments gone? And what have you seen, especially Saturday, where you went from giving up 233 yards in the first half to just 69 total in the second half? Right. Well, first of all, I love our defensive staff. Morgan's yeah. in charge. He's running the show. Uh, he's doing a great job with those guys, all the assistants. Uh, everyone's – there's great – chemistry on the staff and in general not just on defense but this is one of our best staffs maybe the best as far as chemistry and working together and and uh, having an offense that complements the defense and vice versa and Morgan has done a great job as you mentioned at halftime and it's more than just adjustments it's a mindset you know making sure we you know we find another gear and be able to to play 
uh, more efficiently and, and uh, just play better overall. And there, and there was some schematic changes, but more than anything, it, we just ratcheted things up uh, emotionally and, and played better in the second half. Walk us inside. We need you, Tom Hackett, ask you a couple of questions walking <laughs> off the field, yeah. and then you guys go in the locker room. Is there a group meeting? Does the staff get together real quick, or do you bust up quickly into, into position groups? How, and walk us through what, what a halftime is like in, inside of your locker room and how you guys meet as a staff and then get out to the players because you've got you know 20 minutes to get all that stuff taken care of. And, yeah. and in reality, you probably have about 15. 15 at tops because we, we bring them up with about five minutes left in halftime. I bring the team up and talk to them, and it takes us a couple minutes to get in there. So so you've got about 12 to 14 minutes right. of actual time to uh, get things done. And so the first thing that happens when we get inside is offense and defensive staffs meet together. I meet with the defensive staff and listen to what's going on. And, and then Andy's got the offense, and, and they're talking about what they need to adjust and what needs to happen and what's working what's not working that takes probably uh five or six minutes during that time the players are taking care of their business you know going to the restroom or getting retaped or whatever they got going uh so after that the units get together so andy will get the offense together morgan will get the defense together talk about things generally for uh, you know a couple minutes what needs to happen then they'll split up into position groups and detail it out right. for three or four minutes and and uh by then it's time to get back out and get going so. then you send them back out with the kind a final message Absolutely, before they head yeah. out. I bring them up with uh, about five minutes, maybe just under five minutes. Talk to them, tell them what I see, tell them uh, you know where we are in the game as far as uh, what's got to happen in the second half. You know what transpired in the first half, what needs to be different, and uh, you know that's my job to make sure that I get that message through to them. So you, we talked about Tyler a minute ago and his efficiency and how good he's been. Some of that's been because the offensive line play has been good. You had a new group of new five guys, and really had another new group playing together Saturday because right. of some injuries. Yeah, but they've kept him clean. Kyle, he's he hasn't been sacked. You guys haven't committed a turnover yet on offense, so you're yeah, I know. I'm knock on it if you believe in that type of stuff. So you've been you've been really good with that. And this week you had to move some guys around. You had a couple of guys that were week one starters that were out with some with some injuries. So you move Paul Tawala, who's got a little experience up the center. You move Nick Ford back inside, and then Simi Mawala goes to the outside. How did you feel like your offensive line played? I thought they played pretty good. Now there were some deficiencies, and we you know there's always room to get better for every position group. And uh, we got to do a better job of hitting movement. You know, we had some slanters and some some blitzing linebackers run through that, that came through clean. So we've got got some work to do. Got to coach them better in that respect. Um, but they're doing a lot of good things. I mean, they're protecting the quarterback. We're rushing for over 200 yards a week, you know, at least in the first couple games. And uh, like you said, they're keeping Tyler fairly clean. Now, Tyler has, has, you know, with his athleticism, has avoided a couple sacks that a lot of quarterbacks would have gotten sacked. But his his escapability is, is such that he was able to get out get himself out of a jam. But, but overall, I'd say we're very pleased with how the offensive lines played relative to where we are in the season, relative to the experience that some of those guys have. But we got to get better. As long as we can continue on an upward trajectory with those guys, we're going to be in good shape. Last thing I'll ask you about through two games. You're very big on turnover margin. You love it. It's a stat every coach pays attention to. You were plus three in week one. You were plus one on Saturday. So you're plus one, plus four for the season. You upped your sack number on Saturday. Bradley had three. You had four in the game. So you're, you're creating some plays. You probably could be about plus seven or eight right now. You've had a lot of interceptions that just bounced off guys' hands. Are you pleased? Are you making enough big plays defensively for your liking right now? I think so far, yes. But, uh, again, we got to continue that. Uh, we certainly made more plays in the first game defensively, impact-type plays, than we did in the second game. But. But, uh, you know, as long as we can stay on the positive side of that margin and, uh, you know, the, the key is the offense, uh, you know, taking care of the football right. and scoring in the red zone. We were five for five in the red zone past Saturday, you know, five touchdowns and five trips, and that was outstanding. And so if you can take care of the football and score in the red zone, you're not going to lose many games. Uh, you, you'll take five for five and Jaden Redding kicking five extra points any, any day, day of the week. But day. I know there's a, a point, you mentioned it in your press conference yesterday, you'd like to give Jaden a couple of field goal opportunities, right? We would. Yeah, we would, and he's, uh, you know, we're confident in him. He does a great job. He was perfect today in practice. Uh, I think he was eight for eight, and so, it, you know, he needs to get a little bit of experience kicking field goals in games, but but that'll come. I mean, we're not going to, you know, there's going to be opportunities, and so uh, we'll just uh, see what uh, unfolds this Saturday. 
So uh, you're listening to the Kyle Whittingham and watching, for some of you, the stream of the Kyle Whittingham Coaches Show presented by Smiths, our game today and our, our, our uh, broadcast today being brought to you by our friends <coughs> at um, Sync My Game. If you want to listen to our radio broadcast and watch the television broadcast, you can sync them up now. You go to SyncMyGame.com, that's SyncMyGame.com, and your radio and your TV broadcast will be synced together. And you don't have to listen to those TV guys anymore. You can listen to me, Scott, and Tom bring you the Utah football game. We'll take a quick time out here on the Smith's Coaches Show. When we come back, uh, we'll talk a little bit about weekly awards. We'll pass some of those out and uh, a few other things straight ahead. Our guest today, Francis Bernard, Darren Paula. We'll talk to those guys in just a few minutes as well. All right here from Learfield, IMG College. We'll remind you Saturdays are better with a crisp Bud Light at your tailgate. Keep it crisp, Utah Utes, and please drink responsibly. Tyler Huntley's put on about 20 pounds over the last year or so, and you could see it, Kyle, when yeah. he, he took on. He, he wasn't quite Zach Moss-like, <laughs> but I don't think you want him being no. quite Zach Moss-like. But you could see that extra little bit of weight and that speed behind him carried him into the end zone. It did, and, and uh, he worked his tail off in the off season, and now you know his job and ours to help him is to keep that weight on and not let him melt down as the season goes on. Yeah, he was terrific on Saturday. The QBR was number one in the country. He was efficient. He ran it when he needed to run it. I think he had three carries and 38 yards, mm -hmm. and and I think he's going to be your team Utah player.
of the week this week, right? Absolutely. You know, with, with what he did for us and the and the way he ran the offense and took care of the football and put the ball up the field and his accuracy uh, was just outstanding. And so he is definitely our, our player of the week. Team Utah Player of the Week brought to you by University of Utah Health. They've got 16 convenient neighborhood health centers. They've got a game plan for your family's health. Visit U of U, uh, health.org. So Tyler Huntley. There were some other guys, too. Zach had a good game. Bradley and Nye had a fantastic game. Sure did, yeah. Julian Blackman had a good game for you, too. Absolutely. There's probably four or five, maybe half a dozen candidates that that uh, stood out and, and could have won that award. But, again, I just keep going back to Tyler and his uh, – just how – the command is probably the best word, the command that he has at the offense right now. Uh, Tyler Huntley, our University of Utah Health Team Player of the Week. That brings us to our Subway Sub of the Week. And, you know, you didn't have a lot of guys that were out and a lot of backups playing, though later in the game some backups played. But I'll tell you what, you had some guys step up. You had a couple of offensive linemen step up and play well. Paul Tawala, the backup center, stepped in and started well. Simi Mawala got a start out of tackle and played well. But I know you've got a guy on the defensive side of the ball that's in your rotation, but he's not a starter, so he's technically a sub. Exactly, and that would be Josh Nurse. And, and you're exactly right. Uh, Simi and Paul both played exceptionally well in, in their first opportunity, for particularly Simi's, to play extensive time. But uh, Josh was just, uh, you know, he's his his – uh, maturation and his fine tuning of himself at the corner position has gotten to the point now where we, we have no drop off when we put him in the game. I mean, he's, he comes in and and spells both Jalen and and Tariq, and uh, but mostly Tariq, and and also he's a stalwart on special teams. He plays on every special team and does a phenomenal job. He's uh, you know he's so valuable for us. Be, between the reps he plays on special teams and on defense, he got a, he's got a full day's work. You know he's sixty plus reps. He reminds me a lot of a guy named Brian Allen that you had in the program a right. few years ago. Brian yep. came in as a wide receiver. Josh came in as a wide receiver. You switched him to the other side of the ball. You know, Brian, by the time he was a senior, had kind of established himself in the rotation. Josh is beginning to do that as well, and they both have that long, tall body type. Right. You don't see a lot of 6'3 corners, but both those guys were 6'2", 6'3 corners. Exactly, and that's a huge weapon, you know, to be able to get hands on it, the line of scrimmage. Uh, and then also, if you've, you know, if the receiver has a step on you, he really doesn't have a step on you because the the ball's got to come in so high over the top because of that because of that range that uh, it helps in upfield coverage as well and so it's a huge asset and you don't see many guys at that height because there's not many guys at that height that have the hips and the speed and the the fluidity that uh, is that a word fluidity yeah that's I think a good that's a word, word. Yeah. yeah so so anyway that's uh, you know he's just like uh, like you mentioned. Uh, you know, the, the corners that we've had in the past, those tall corners, Brian Allen, uh, Keith McGill played corner Sean for us Smith. while, Sean Smith. And we've had some guys that have been exceptional corners that have that great wingspan. Well, I like Josh, too, because he's always pretty upbeat and pretty positive very, guy. He's got a very, great attitude. Yeah. He's a lot of fun to talk to. He is, and he's come a long way. When he got here uh, a few years back, he was a little bit – uh, all over the place with his emotions, but he's reeled him in and he's got him channeled right now in the right direction. You've got both. You're getting good play on at that corner spot opposite of Jalen for both he and Tariq Lewis. Without in fact, Tariq Lewis from the Pro Football Focus folks made the All Pac-12 team on defense this yep, week. Yep, he's playing exceptionally well, and and it was worth the wait. We waited about a year and a half to get him in the program from when we signed him, and uh, he's it's paying off. Another guy who's paying dividends. It took a minute for him to get here too. Is Derek Vickers. His journey here was a long and wild and <laughs> right. and rocky one, but he's finally here. And we saw Andy had a package for him the other day, and he really took advantage. He did, and, and Derek, uh, it wasn't only a challenge to get him here, but it was a challenge to get the sixth year. You know, that was yeah. not a slam dunk, and we didn't know until, uh, you know, in the summertime whether or not they were going to grant him that sixth year. So he's overcome a lot of adversity, and now is his time to, to uh, make a contribution. And uh, nobody better than Andy Ludwig to, to maximize what Derek Vickers has to offer. All right, we've got – Darren Paulo and Francis Bernard coming up. We're going to do Darren first here. He's a senior captain. Tell us something about Darren Paulo that maybe we don't know. He's a Northern California kid from Sacramento. He's been in your program now. He, he came in, and you could look at him and see he had all the physical characteristics. So right. what do we need to know about one of your senior captains? Well, he comes from a very athletic family, I'll tell you that. He had a brother that played at Washington State. He's got a sister that's a tremendous shot putter and discus thrower. And so the whole family is, is very athletic. And uh, it was uh, a war between us and Oregon You know, to, to get him. It came down to us or Oregon. And, and uh, he just fell in love with the program and with Coach Harding, and and uh, he's been a, a great member of our team. And he's good. He's not only a great player; he's a great teammate, which uh, you know is is huge for us. We'll talk to Darren Powell.
Paolo coming up here in a minute. Uh, you've got a lot of guys that come from athletic families. We had the Bartons for all the years yeah. here. The uh, the Anai family is a pretty darn athletic family yeah. with Bradley and his sister sure. Dora, the other sister that's down doing a little track yeah. at BYU, and now the Krugers, the Krugers, Krugers forever. Yeah. And now yeah. you've got the Paolo family. We've had too. some good genetics come through here, no yeah. doubt about that. All right, we'll take a time out here on the Coach's Show, and when we come back uh, on the show presented by Smiths, we'll talk to senior offensive tackle Darren Paolo here on. Uh, Learfield and College IMG. going to become a common phrase he's broken 27 tackles already this year he leads college football and one of the reasons he's so good at getting the yardage he gets is the guy that's joined us here on the coaches show tonight we welcome you back into the smiths kyle whittingham coaches show and joining us right now senior captain and left tackle darren paolo with us here on the program tonight how are you doing good doing good uh excited to be here i'm glad that you could join <laughs> yeah. us here tonight so we're two games into the season now your guy zach moss we just heard the highlight he's had a good year yeah. so far the offensive line's had a good year you've kept tyler clean how have you felt about the first two games uh i mean so far we have zero sacks zero turnovers so uh, it's not just us up front uh, it goes to tyler to zach to everyone pretty much on the offense uh even to coach led's new offense so we give credit to everybody uh, but we're loving what we're, what we're seeing so far with production and averaging about 200 rushing yards. Uh, I'm not sure about passing, but all we care about are friends are rushing. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> well, it's the rushing yards <laughs> and keeping your quarterback clean, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's always big. So 
You were named a captain a couple of weeks ago by your yep. peers, Darren. What what did that? You've been in the program now four years. Yeah. So what what did it mean to you when you found out when Coach stands up in front of you and announces the captains and you hear your name called? What did that mean to you? I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> uh, no, but I, um, I appreciate you know my peers, not just the coaches, and but uh, we always have a vote for leadership and everything. And um, I'm glad to say that my peers voted for me as a captain, and they look up to me to guide them and lead them in you know hard games. So far, we really haven't uh, we really haven't had any adversity too much. But uh, when it comes, you know, they'll be looking to me and to Tyler, to Tyler, and pretty much everybody, but just me and Tyler so far. And I just appreciate them. Uh, seeing me as a captain. So. Who did you look toward when you came in as a freshman out of Northern mm-hmm. California and you come into this program and you chose to come to Utah because you wanted to play for Coach Harding and Coach yeah. Witt and be part of this Utah family? Who were some of the guys that kind of took you under their wing? Who were some of the guys that you looked up to in the program when maybe you were a freshman? Uh, the first name that comes to thought is C.O.C. Iono. Uh-huh. Uh, he plays with a lot of passion. Uh, I think that was the thing that set him apart from everybody else. Uh, you know, J.J. and Sam and all those guys are great, uh, but just something about CLC, I don't know, that made me feel like that's something that I should have uh, now, especially as a captain, because uh, it's something that I looked up to and it helped me play better or even practice better. So you got to have somebody. I mean, everybody's got to have somebody, whether you're a safety or a corner or a punter yeah. or a long snapper. Yeah. you got to have somebody who kind of takes you under their wing and says, hey, yeah, if you got a question, ask me, or here's how you do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and just even with the O-line, just speaking from experience with the O-line so far, uh, that's like how's – Nick Ford and Orlando Umana and Paul Tawala, Kyle Anderman, all those guys step up. It's not just me, uh, but we all give advice to all the young guys and always tell everyone, even on if the receiver drops a ball tight end, we always tell them next play, move on. Uh, if Tyler makes a bad read or something or Zach gets tackled in the backfield, we always tell him we got him the next play. So, Darren Paolo with us here on the uh, Coaches Show tonight. So let's let's go back in time for a minute. You're going to Grant High School <laughs> in Sacramento, California. Yep. You're a NorCal guy. Yep. H- how do you get from there to Salt Lake City? What was the journey like? And, and how did you end up choosing Utah versus <clears throat> some of the other schools you had options to go to? Uh, I think it was just – I think the thing that separates everything else from all the other schools was definitely family. Uh, a lot of schools preach, you know, we're family, we're close, we're all this. Um but when I came here, I just I could sense something different, uh, especially coming from a close family of you know my own. I could sense when people actually like each other, and especially with O line D line, usually they don't like each other. <laughs> but <laughs> but we don't like each other on the field. But as soon as we're done, you know everything's all handshakes after practice. We love each other and we just hang out together and you know we just chill out at the blocks and stuff. So. What, what are those what are those battles like? I mean, you guys are tough up front. Yeah. Utah's offensive line's always been physical. The defensive line we know. Yep. So what are those battles like in practice and how how heated do they get? What's the what's what's the, what's that like on a day in and day out basis? Uh, I think. We don't like to lose, neither of us. Yeah. Uh, so when one starts losing, we always try our best to not lose the next rep. But if someone keeps losing, it's, it usually gets kind of mouthy a little bit. But, uh, you know, it's all love. But we all play. It's it's really hard to win every rep, especially with those guys. And I would like to think it's hard for them to win every rep against us. But uh, we pride on our, our we pride ourselves on being physical, but so do they. So do they make you better? I mean, oh, we, yeah. hear, we hear coaches oh, yeah. say that, but we're like, do they really do yeah. they make you better? Yeah, I yeah, especially with Bradley, Lecky, John. I mean, Mika. I mean, Mika stood out like people didn't know about him until uh, the BYU game, and he bought out. Uh, but we always know him. Uh, but those guys always make us better and you know i'd like to think that they're the best uh not just in the conference but in the country i mean i think all the lists have them with clemson but we try to ignore all those stuff <laughs> but it's nice to know that you're not probably going to go up but you'll, you'll see some good defensive lines oh yeah get me wrong yeah but there aren't going to be many if any that are better than the one you see every day in practice yeah man those guys uh i'm grateful for them because <laughs> uh i mean we play against like you know, good teams, BYU, uh, NIU, they have great defensive lines, but just going against our own defensive line just makes the game a lot slower and makes us think a lot faster, you know, on the fly, and it helps us uh, just click together better because we're so used to playing against physical and big guys, but also smart. So You spent 
your most of your career here on the right side of the offensive yeah. line. You played right tackle. I know you'd seen reps. They they always gave you reps. You were kind of the backup yeah. last year out there, but you're making the switch full time. Yeah. So what's been the biggest adjustment from moving right side to left side, and do you feel comfortable out there? Uh, I just want to say I love the left side. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything for the team, basically. Uh, I think the biggest thing I had to just switch – uh, my, you know, everyone is obviously the stance, right? And just kicking with the power, changing with my leg and kicking. Uh, but even just the personnel going against Bradley is probably the biggest physical and mental challenge moving over to the left side. But I hope you know on film I look decent at it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I love the left side. I like it. Uh, a lot more than the right side, but, you know, anything to help the team. All right, we've heard the off-season storyline that the offensive line was a question mark. Uh-huh. Yeah, you heard it, too. Oh, yeah, we loved that one. Yeah, I know you did. <laughs> but 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 the question was really because you had to put some new guys in there. Not you, you flip yeah. sides. Paul, Paul played a little bit last year. Uh, Orlando played a little bit last year. Obviously, Nick played a little bit last yep. year. But you've got two new starters. So you tell me where you are right now and how good this <laughs> offensive line can maybe be in a week, in two weeks, by the end of yeah. the year? Uh, yeah, we like to take it week by week. But uh, I'm sure you've seen by now we've had four different new starters. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, the question mark is a legit question. Uh, but just rotating with all those new guys gives us even more confidence to know that they can play at a high level. And uh, just it's nice in having, you know, depth at the O-line, something that people didn't know that we had until the past couple of weeks. Uh, But they performed well, and it's just good to really know where we really are against other teams besides our own. But, yeah, we've come really, really far away from even the beginning of uh, fall camp. How good can this team be? Amazing. Uh, If we, you know, if leadership steps up, uh, I think Coach Witt says it best, is a good team is, you know, listen to the coaches, but the great teams are always led by the players. So I think – we have the leadership to do it, and we definitely have the talent. So I think we have a lot of potential to go farther than, you know, the world, like, Pac-12 championship. But we like to think week by week. So Unfinished business, right? Unfinished business. Yes, sir. Hey, Darren, thanks for coming by. Yes, sir. Thank Good you. Good to see you. Darren Paolo with us here tonight, starting left tackle, University of Utah. And uh, the offensive line, a work in progress, but still a very talented group up front anchored by this guy. We'll take a timeout. When we come back, we'll flip sides of the ball and check in with uh, Francis Bernard, senior linebacker. He's had a wild journey here, too. We'll talk to Francis next. It's Utah Football Coaches Show presented by Smith from Learfield IMG College.
pretty good way to start the season for Francis Bernard. He has a knack for making big plays in Utah BYU games, no matter what jersey he's wearing. Made a big win at Rice Eccles Stadium a few years ago, too. Still one of the most acrobatic interceptions I've ever seen a linebacker make. And he joins us here on the Coaches Show tonight here on uh, Learfield IMG College. How are you? I'm good. Really doing really good. <laughs> Came off the practice field today. It was, it, it's almost starting to feel like fall out oh, there, Francis. Man, I know. It, it's funny. I think – Fall came in, just kicked some right out, and now <laughs> here they are, you know, just here for for the football season. So you'll, you'll take a little bit of rain over 95 degrees any day. Oh won't my you? goodness, absolutely yes. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you: It has been a long, strange journey for you, my man, oh, yeah. from Harriman High School to the University of Utah. Do you feel finally kind of feel at home and settled in your senior year and ready to go? Oh yeah, um, you know things have finally just kicked in and you know just like you said I've calmed down and now all I'm doing just focusing on football and you know doing my best to uh, show my talents and do my best to contribute to the team. I don't know if people remember this but when you came out of high school you were a running back. Yeah. You were an all-state yeah. running back at Harriman that people see you now playing linebacker and making tackles but you were running back. Was Utah ever a consideration coming right out of high school or were you BYU all the way? So they were. I, I didn't have it a, have an offer right. so I was going to actually just either prefer walk on here or just um, take uh, you take the scholarships that I had and so sure. I ended up going to BYU just because of that so a after after your time there and then you were out of football for a minute did you ever worry that maybe you wouldn't play football again was there ever a time in your mind where you're like I may not play again oh yeah there's definitely times where you know I was down and kind of didn't know what to do and I mean but uh, I had great people around me that kind of put their arms around me and helped me get back on my feet and helped me to get to where I am now. How was it coming in here? We were just talking to Darren a minute ago. We hear a lot of guys when they come in here, they're recruited here. They talk about it felt like a good family atmosphere. You, weren't re you were recruited, but you weren't. But you came in and you knew a lot of guys here. You knew the program. Did it feel like family when you stepped in here? Yeah. I mean, it was. they were a little, you know, Push, they're pushing me back at first just because I came from BYU, but um, you know, just a few days into the program, uh, the linebackers have kind of just put their arms around me and helped me go get to the program, and then you know, from there it was just the rest of the team, everyone in my pod, and then the whole locker room just kind of helped me get used to the system, and so um, I'm just. It's just a, a testament to Coach Witt and what he's done to the, the culture of, the, of this program. And it's just so family-oriented. It's amazing. So you, you had Coach Anna as your coach last year. And now you've got Coach Swan as your coach this year. And, and I've loved meeting Coach Swan and getting to know him. Oh, yeah. He fits in perfectly, I think, with Coach Scally and Coach Shaw. Energy yeah. all day long. How's the linebacker room? How's that group coming together? Oh, it's awesome. I mean, if you were to ever sit down and talk with uh, Coach Swan, one, he's, he's a great guy off the field, funny, you know, just like I said, energetic, just always upbeat. But uh, he knows his X's and, X's and O's. And so, I mean, so did Coach Enna. But, um, you know, they're just, they're, they teach differently. And I'm just, we're just fortunate to have Coach Swan. And, you know, he's helped us out a, a ton. So how are you and Devin kind of meshing together? You know, if Devin was going to begin the year as the third linebacker, mm -hmm. kind of where you were a year ago. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, Manny leaves the program, so you two got to get thrust together. You feel like you've got a good working relationship right now? Oh, yeah. I, I feel like – so, when I first came into the program, we kind of got to know each other, like, just because, you know, we were the ones trying to fight for that third role in the job. And so, we got to know each other really well. Um, and so, we started doing our own pregame routine together. And from there, it just translated for, to working out together, doing extra stuff off the field. And so – you know, we've, we've got to know each other really well, and we gel really well together. It's been really interesting when we get to practice, and we don't get to watch all the practice. We show up. You guys are some of the last guys off the field every single day, and I notice you out there with some of the younger guys. You know, you're out there with Trenton Carlson and Sione Lund and, you know, and uh, Andrew Mataafa, and you and Devin both, you're kind of almost running the group out there. Do you almost kind of feel like the elder statesman and almost oh, like yeah. a coach yeah, to, yeah. We kinda, and a mentor to those guys? Yeah, we kind of do, um, just because, one, well, you know, we know the defense the best and we just want to be that example to them like hey look this is how things are ran you know we're always going to be the, you know, the first ones on the field the last ones off the field that's just kind of the linebacker mentality you know you got to be the hardest workers and so the more and more we do that the more and more they'll you know jump along and just continue to kind of follow our lead. Senior linebacker Francis Bernard with us here on the Kyle Whittingham Coaches Show so walk me through the first two games how do you think they've gone defensively and also walk me through the pick six down in Provo. Man, first game, first two games, I thought we, you know, we, we came out the first game firing, you know, all cylinders doing really well. Um, the second game, you know, was a little slow, 
But, uh, you know, that second half picked it up. We had the guys play tremendously well, like Bradley and I, Julian Blackman. Um, and so, you know, obviously, you know, we do great things. Now we just need to put uh, everything together and make sure we play four quarters of complete ball. Um, the pick six, honestly. Was uh, that instinct? Was that film study? How much, you know, kind of, it's probably a little bit of both, but get, get, yeah. walk me through it. I mean, did you have an idea that we're going to go to the flat over there? Honestly, it was just uh, – it was a great job by Bradley and I getting to the quarterback, and I just knew the quarterback was going to make a bad decision. I'm like, all right, this ball's either coming to me or he's going to throw it to the ground. And he threw the ball, and I was like, oh, yeah, here we go. Kept out the ball, and I was like, please don't catch me. As I was running the ball, I was like, please no one catch me. Let me go score. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man, that's great. So where can you guys get better defensively? You've been pretty good the first two weeks. And, and maybe how do you correct the slow starts? The halftime adjustments have been fantastic. You guys have been terrific in the second half. How do you not have to make so many halftime adjustments? Yeah, I, I think it's uh, just being being able to uh, – everyone just needs to come out hot, um, ha have, having the mindset that, you know, we're playing – you know, Alabama every single week. Every single snap is like, you know, I'm playing against the best guy in the country. Um, and, and we all need to have that mentality because we do, you know, at times, probably 85, 90% of the times, but we need to have it 100% of the times. And when we have it 100% of the times, we're, I believe our defense is unstoppable. So gets pretty good. Oh, yeah. How is it being a dad? Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, my son's freaking, that's, that's my. My life and joy, and I, I love every second being with him, so I love it. Pretty good inspiration, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, tell me about Saturday. What are you looking forward to doing on Saturday? How do you guys get better on Saturday? Man, uh, you know, Coach Witt's been uh, addressing it all week. You know, it, this is a game. Uh, obviously, you know, Idaho State plays in, you know, a lower division, but it's a game to see where we're at, to see, you know, what kind of, you know, elite teams don't step down to, you know, uh, average teams level. What they do is they continue to play at elite levels. And so we need to come out this Saturday and play elite, show that we are an elite team, and then show, we, show that we are an elite defense. And so I'm excited to see what we can do. I am too. I'll see you on Saturday, yeah, Francis. For sure. Francis Bernard with us here on the Coaches Show tonight. Our show tonight being brought to you by Pepsi. They sponsor all of our touchdowns, even the ones that they're run in by the defense. They're called Code Red Touchdowns. And Pepsi's a proud sponsor of Utah Athletics. Grab a Pepsi and get into the game with some friends. Time out. Back with Kyle Whittingham to talk about Idaho State as we continue on on a Tuesday night. This is the Coach's Show from Learfield IMG College.
Good to see that Hallandale trio all get touchdowns on Saturday as Utah beat up on Northern Illinois. Welcome you back into the Coaches Show tonight. Being presented by Pepsi and Smiths. Idaho State on Saturday. Uh, they won in their only game, beat Western Colorado by a score of, uh, I think it was 38-16. And their quarterback threw for a bunch of yards, a bunch of receivers there too. What do we need to know about the Bengals? Well, you're right. They, they threw for over 400 yards uh, on Saturday. Uh, it was their first game. They didn't have a game in, in week one. Uh, got a big receiver that's very productive, you know, 6'4", 220-plus pounds. And another kid that's got some size, not quite that size, but a big kid. And then a, uh, a little slot back, uh, not very big, but he's a 10, 600-meter guy, extremely fast. Uh, defensively, uh, very similar to what we saw last week as far as line movement and stunts and, and being able to, being, you know, us needing to be able to pick up the twists and the movement. Um, Utah 7-0 and all time. The last time Utah played Idaho State was 14. It was 56-14. Uh, you might remember a game back in 1988. Uh, sure do. Scott Mitchell started that game, <laughs> right. threw for a bunch of yards, 41-16. You were a coach at Idaho State at the time. You spent six years in Pocatello. I did. That was my first year there, 88. Uh, and I was a uh, linebacker coach and then about four weeks before the season started, our special teams coordinator uh, had to re retire and go back to back to the East Coast, so I got named the special teams coordinator just you know weeks before the season. So I was scrambling to get ready, and, and but I enjoyed it. That that started my special teams background for four years. I was the the special teams coordinator before I became uh, defensive coordinator the last two years. So so how did that stop in particular? Because you had some graduate positions before that. And I think you were at a college of Eastern Utah or something. Yeah, one too. season. But, but how did those, those years kind of help formulate you and kind of jumpstart you on the coaching career? Well, first of all, they were great years. My, my wife and I, you know, we just had uh, just a little small family. And, and my first job, it was uh, 18000 a year. I made $18,000 in 19, <laughs> 1988. And, and uh, I was just grateful and blessed to have a job because it's hard to break into the profession, yeah. particularly at the four-year level. You know, even though it's, though it's 1AA, it, it was at the four-year level. Uh, Coach Garth Hall who had been my running back coach at BYU when I was there as a freshman, that's the position I played, uh, was had just got the head job and I was just ready to try to get into the profession. So it timed out just right where <clears throat> him getting his first job and me being ready for my first opportunity. And, and we had six good years there and it didn't win a lot of games. You know, it was a little frustrating in that respect. It was, it was some tough times, but, but uh, had a great time. And, and uh, to this day, me and my wife still, you know, talk about, the time we had there and the and just starting out with our family and and uh, just good memories who that. else was on that staff with you there were some names on that staff andy, with you. andy was andy there Ludwig, with you yeah. was walt, gary up there with you gary was up there as well uh he was up there for the last two years uh walt kreiner was up there uh danny moeller who was the defensive coordinator my first four years and he was uh the defensive coordinator when they won the whole thing in 1981 i believe okay. it was with dave cragthorpe they came up there and won the national Kurt's championship kurt's dad exactly and uh Let's see who else was on that staff. Uh, Louis Giamona was on it until he had. He was the one that had to uh, get back to the East Coast. He had a family issue that he had to go yeah. back for. But getting to know Louis Giamona was a was a treat. I, I don't know if you know him at all. Uh -uh. Or he is an absolute uh, classic person and, and just funny. And and uh, he was of course a great running back up at Utah State. I think he probably still holds some records up there. But but uh, anyway, that was a good crew and and uh, we had a lot of good times. But didn't win a lot of games. Uh, we hope that Utah has a lot of good times on Saturday. 2.15 kickoff. We'll have it for you right here on Learfield IMG College. Quick timeout, final segment with Coach. Quick look around the Pac-12 and a couple of game keys for Saturday. All coming up right here from Learfield IMG College.
spending money. She works out and spends money. Ross Bowers lost and got sacked a bunch on Saturday. His old team, though, the Cal Bears won. That was one of the surprises last Saturday night for those of us. Yep. I tried to stay up to watch the end of it. It was like 3 in the morning when it ended. But uh, Cal going into Washington and beating Washington was a pretty big statement for the Bears. It was. And that's the second year in a row, right, that yeah. Cal's taking them down. And and uh, I'm with you. I was trying to watch it and fell asleep. I mean, it was that, what was it, 2 hours and 40 minutes or yeah. something like that delay. And so I, I was just worn out and couldn't, uh, couldn't muster up the strength to watch it when I woke up next morning and saw what had happened uh, that was very surprising the other thing that was maybe surprising maybe not the result but the, the margin was USC beating Stanford yeah. last weekend pretty handily you'll see them in a yeah. week but uh, you know all the injuries and losing your starting quarterback that backup kid came in and threw it pretty well he did and uh, you know especially when they got off to such a bad start what was it 17 nothing or something like that yeah, early 17 Stanford, three. 73 yeah. and then to come roaring back and, and take the game over was pretty impressive well that's the one thing and you and I have talked about that over the years the one thing they never lack at USC is talent four and five star athletes littered throughout the pro without throughout the program throughout you, the run. you should never feel bad for USC Ever. even a yeah. bad years they've got lots of talent in that program you've got a lot of talent in your program your last non-conference games coming up on Saturday uh -huh. uh, what do you want to get accomplished heading into conference play Saturday obviously the win we know that but but aside from that what do you want to see get happen on Saturday against Idaho State I think take another step forward with the uh, evolution of the offense you know it can, it's continuing to evolve and to to expand and that's you know by design Andy you know has a master plan that he's in, uh, adheres to and uh, you know he's installed offenses at several different places so he knows exactly what he's doing and so I think uh, just take that next step offensively uh, I would like to see us get off to a better start as a whole right you know, we haven't got off to a much of a start the last two games and so that would be a positive if we could start faster and and uh, do some you know, positive things early in the game instead of waiting until after halftime. It's Utah and Idaho State on Saturday. Our network pregame show comes your way at high noon with a 2.15 kickoff. The weather's supposed to be good. It might be a little warm on that turf, but uh, we'll cool down uh, as need be. Thank you, Kyle. Okay, Billy. Appreciate you. We'll see you on Saturday. Thank you, Thank you to J.P. Chunk, our executive producers on the network, Steve Borland and Julie Johnson. We'll talk to you Saturday from Rice-Eccles Stadium. This is Utah Football and the Kyle Whittingham Coaches Show from Learfield IMG College. Good night.